This video is all about making snacks at home. I've put together a few options that are really easy and quick to make. Now the first one might seem a little bit strange uh, but bear with me I promise it tastes amazing. First of all I would take my rice cakes. I really like the brand Kalo because all they have in it is whole grain rice um, and sea salt, that's all that's in those. So I usually take two of those and then I would take some soft cheese. And I will just take a small amount of the soft cheese, spread it on top of the rice cake. I would then take some jam. This one's raspberry, but um, I usually would use strawberry, but I just have raspberry at the moment, so I'm gonna use that. Again, I would take a light layer of that and just spread it on top of the cream cheese. And then lastly, I will take my little bowl of thinly sliced strawberries and place those on top of the jam. And there you have it, a nice, quick, easy snack. This is a nice simple one. This is for the times when you just need a quick sweet fix. So I would just take three dates and what I would do is I would just cut them in half like so and take out the pip in the middle. Now that those are open, I would take my almond butter. The one I'm using is pip and nut. I choose this one because it is 99.6% almonds and then just a little bit of sea salt. So then what I would do next is I would just take out a small amount and I would use that to fill the date. And you just close them back up and you literally just eat them like that. So you would only really need a small amount of these. Reason being is that dates are naturally very sweet. So two or three would be plenty. You also might not want to go crazy on the dates just because they are very fibrous. And just one of these small dates on its own is about 60 calories. And a tablespoon of almond butter is again about 90. So you wouldn't really want to be overdoing it with those. That might sound like a lot of calories for um, not a particularly large amount of food, but as I say, this is more for if you're looking for a sweet fix um, and you want something that's quick and simple, but also natural, then this could be a really good option. They don't look like the most appetizing things in the world, but I promise you that the combination of the sweet date and the salty almond butter make a really good combination. For this one, surprise, surprise, we're starting off with two rice cakes. This time I'm going to top it with a thin layer of peanut butter. For peanut butter, I always tend to go for the Whole Earth brand, just because mainly it is just peanuts, a little bit of oil and sea salt. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is top it with some sliced banana. Then I will just top that with a very light squeeze of agave nectar. Finally, to top it off, I'm just going to throw on the cacao nibs. And there we have it, a super quick, tasty snack. This one is so quick and easy that there's not even any point filming preparation. So for this one, I've just thrown together some grapes and a little bit of cheddar cheese. In terms of our daily recommended amount of portions for dairy, isn't that much. Um, I would just bear that in mind when including it in your snacks. Next up is my tried and tested banana loaf. Obviously, this is not one for eating all at once as a snack. But I like to make this up so that I have a few days worth of a quick and easy snack that I can grab as and when I fancy. So first of all, start off by preheating your oven. I have a fan oven, so I start mine at 160 degrees. The first thing I do is mix together my oil and my agave nectar in a bowl. You can use whichever oil you have to hand. I usually like to use either coconut oil or olive oil. And in this video, I'm gonna be using agave nectar 
but you could also use honey or you could use maple syrup. So then I just mix those two together until combined nicely. And it usually ends up looking something like this. You can see it's a little bit thicker than it was before. Then to that mixture, I just add in two eggs. Here I have two mashed bananas in the bowl already prepared. Along with some almond milk. Once that's all combined, I will then add in a little bit of baking soda, a little bit of salt, and some vanilla extract. And lastly, a little bit of cinnamon. Almost there, we're going to add in our flour. I tend to use wholemeal flour. I usually add it in about half at a time just to make it a bit easier to stir. Last but certainly not least are our mix-ins. Today I'm using chocolate chips. But you can also add nuts. I usually use walnuts or pecan nuts, but I don't have any today, so I'm just using chocolate chips. So you just add those in. And with these, you want to fold them in so that they distribute evenly. Now that that's all of our ingredients mixed together, we can transfer it into a pre-greased loaf tin. Now that's all in the baking tin, I would usually just top it off with a sprinkle of cinnamon. And now we can pop this in the oven for about 50 minutes to an hour. It's ready when it can be poked through with a knife and the knife comes out clean. And as easy as that, there we have our banana bread. I hope that was helpful.